I'm building a pole barn house. And people have asked me several times, hey Don, aren't you afraid your house is gonna fall over someday? And they're asking that question because I'm building a pole barn house. And pole barn structures don't have any foundation at all. Wait, no foundation? You see, our house, just like it is with all the other traditional pole barn and post frame buildings, relies on the posts in the ground to support the entire structure. No fancy concrete footers or center block walls. It's all in the wood posts holding up the building. So it does make a little sense why people would be concerned about the building falling over because a lot of people, when they see wood in the ground, they think of rot. They think of horror stories with fence posts rotting in the ground and falling over. They think of barns falling over because of a rotted post. And I'm simply not worried about that at all. And I'm confident because my posts are wrapped. Wrapped with a heavy duty layer of polyethylene that stops any moisture from ever making contact with the treated wood underneath. Specifically, this product is called the Green Post by Advanced Post Solutions. And that post wrap was immediately suggested by our builder, Conestoga Buildings. They build pole barn structures all around the East Coast. And I knew right away, after looking into it just a little bit, I knew that that was the product that was going to help protect all of our structural posts and make sure this home is still standing 100 plus years from now. To learn more about the Green Post from Advanced Post Solutions, I actually reached out to them at the company and asked if we could sit down for a little bit and chat about what goes into the post wrap and how it really does prevent rot from ever having an impact on your posts. And just so you guys know, I put chapters in this video so you can look down in the timeline and move around and review different sections of the video so that you can get the information that you need. So guys, here is my conversation with Barry Hoffman from Advanced Post Solutions. For decades post frame construction was something that the agriculture industry was very comfortable with because the industry used old growth timbers that have been around for decades and decades about nine years ago the industry was as the term they prefer to use the industry was introduced to faster growing timbers what that means in a typical very common section size post that's used for uh, pole buildings we used to have an average of 80 growth rings in that post that would be used for the pole building. Today, we're looking at 20 to 24. With the growth ring so much further apart, what it's doing is the posts are, what's happening at the posts are, obviously when the ground goes through its wetting and drying cycles with the rain in conditions of snow melt, the post will obviously absorb more moisture because the growth rings are so far apart. The biggest challenge that we're, we're hearing, the builders are now telling us they're seeing rot and decay starting to occur in some of their posts in post frame construction after eight or nine years which historically has never happened. The indication that's coming back from the builders is they feel that because the growth rings are so far apart, it appears as though the water that's being absorbed into the post are diluting the preservatives that are designed to keep the post from rotting. And obviously as they dry out, um, they're losing their efficiency or their, their effectiveness, if you will, uh, to be able to keep that post from rotting. Specifically within the last 10 years, especially within the last 10 years, the true value in something such as green post seals in the preservatives in the post, obviously, therefore allowing the post to last that much longer and coming with the additional benefit that you do not have any leaching of preservatives into the ground where that could be, you know, a concern in certain regions in the country today anymore. Green post is fully code approved for United States and Canada, North America, for residential, for commercial, uh, for using with any type of timber, whether it's treated or non-treated, through in order to get those code approvals, had to go through 25-year accelerated testing with two different agencies in the country. And in each case, in both of the accredited uh, testing agencies at the universities, it showed that the green post would last a minimum of five times longer than a standard treated post. And this was actually done back with, in the day where the old growth timber was still being used. Green post can be applied to uh, various species in, in various lumbers, whether it's treated or non-treated. Um, typically in the post frame construction throughout the United States today, yeah, we're still looking at uh, standard lumber, southern yellow pine, typically. Um, the first step is, as you mentioned, the, the uplift notches that we have the pattern for. The posts are laid horizontally onto a transfer deck. Uh, they are then transferred through each station. The first station, again, is the notcher station where we put the uplift notches in and we ease the edges. We have continued to ease the edges because you, initially when I first started, I had to bring a container load of what we then called boots over from the UK where this technology was originated. But that the challenge we ran into is that material was strictly low density polyethylene, the outside layer, 
And we had some challenges for the large pole buildings when that would sit out in the middle of summer in 95 degree heat for four or five hours because of it being low density polyethylene, that sun would actually soften up that polyethylene and it became handling issues until they got it in the ground. So we quickly identified that we had to come up with our own polyethylene. Um, but, and that's the reason that I'm mentioning that is that's why we had the east edges on the poles to help eliminate any, you know, tearing of the, the polyethylene while it was being handled because we had to um, invent and design each stage of this process for here in the States because it was originally, as I said, it came from the UK in the form of a pre-welded, as it was called, uh, boot or sleeve, if you will. The uplift notches are a pattern that we do hold, and they're very effective, and contractors really appreciate these because where uplift requirements would come into a building, for example, on a pavilion or a large agriculture building that would have at least one end open for uh, big farm equipment storage, there has to be uplift protection designed into the building. And typically what happens there is the builders either nail blocks, they have to cut nail blocks to the bottom on each side of the post and then bury it in the ground or in concrete, or they have to drill offsetting holes in the poles at the bottom and put half inch rebar crisscross in that pole. The notches that we have eliminate the need for either one of those. Um, you simply drop the post, the contractor drops the post in the ground, you put 16 inches of concrete, which takes it up to the top of the top notch, which is a conservative amount. And the uplift seals that we have with the engineered values show that that is almost twice as strong as two pieces of half inch rebar. The second station is what we refer to as our sprayer station, where we spray our water-based asphalt emulsion onto the post for a complete coating. Yeah, so it's a waterproofing material and that gets sprayed on again in an even coat. And then the third station is our wrapper station where we will wrap, spirally wrap the polyethylene in six inch wide bands with an inch and a half overlap onto the post. And it gets sealed at the top with what the little design that we came up with um, called a heat knife. It actually just holds it in place and pretty much tacks it fast so that a wrapper, I'm sorry, can pull back off of the post and go onto the heat box. And the heat station um, covers the post for a predetermined period of time and temperature so that it fuses and for lack of a better term, heat shrinks and seals everything down to the post. Right. Once the heat station re comes, retracts from the post, it goes now to the last station, which is our roller station. We have four rollers for each side of the post with a ice um, temperature sensor on top of the station, which monitors the temperature of the post after it comes out of the heat box so that the polyethylene cools down enough that it'll stiffen up to the point where we can clamp onto all four sides and roll all four sides to the top of the wrap to make sure it's a good tight fit, no air bubbles, and it's a proper seal. Yeah. Comes off the line, gets ready to go to the, to the job site or you know for installation. But there's thousands of buildings every year that are, are using this um, based on the numbers that each of the applicators have to report in for their quarterly inspections for us to know what's going on and, and, and do what we do as a parent company to keep things under control and, and keep our finger on the pulse, if you will. But we have, since early mid 2000s since like 2005 2006 we have builders from iowa down through kentucky tennessee over through north carolina and everything north of both of those areas and east so not quite half of the country has been using you know the green post and especially over the last three four years each year is exponential growth it's 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 refreshing it's amazing to see um but because of the challenges that the industry are now going the industry is now going through um, people are being made more aware of it. And because of, you know, this premature rot and decay that they're seeing that they never saw before, um, uh, builders are out searching. They want to know what they can do. So, and there's two or three other products that are out there that are similar in concept. Um, I'm proud to say that Green Post is one of the only ones that has full code approval through North America for the process, you know, lifetime guarantee. Um, once we came up with the polyethylene, we found out that our, our blend is very similar to what's used in landfill liners. Yeah. yeah, it's becoming actually quite popular. The, the combination residence and either garage or barn post frame construction is becoming very, very popular across the country. Yep, barn aluminiums. It's it's the new trend, and they do it all over Texas and the South, and a lot yep. more people bring it up in the northern areas now too. It's just it. I could not believe how fast this crew they sent down a wonderful Amish crew down from Lancaster and or Lancaster, and uh, very good. There you go. They had the structure up in nine days. It was ready to go. And here I am two years later trying to finish my house. Oh God, but, yeah. But yeah, post frame, it's it's very cost effective if you're a DIYer especially. And I mean, if you're paying somebody to trim it out and do turnkey, I don't, I don't know, but you kind of lose the concept there. But uh, for us, we were really happy with how quick it went up, how strong this building is. You know, mm -hmm. we got the post savers on every single post. 
and our posts are four to five feet deep and we're on the side of a mountain and i, I don't have any worries at all this this Great. house is going to last for generations so yep. we're pretty happy with it good good that's pretty awesome yeah glad to hear I hope you guys enjoyed that and learned a little bit more about post protection. And before we sign off here, I just want to mention, I do know that there's other solutions out there even beyond wood post frame construction. I know that a lot of people like to put brackets in the concrete and then mount the post to that. Everything has its advantages and disadvantages. But when it came to me in my building, I wanted something that was going to sink deep into the ground, not have to pour a foundation at all on the side of this mountain. So this definitely felt like the right solution for our building. If you've been following us, you know that we've been building and finishing out the inside of this house for a very long time. The crew from Conestoga Buildings, they were down here two years ago and put up the structure in nine days. And well, let's just say it's taken a while for me to get the inside finished myself. But we are nearing the home stretch. We're going to be finished this fall. Maybe not trimmed out, but everything will be finished. And if you're interested in seeing more from our build process, I do have a playlist that I'll link here. And definitely subscribe if you want to follow the rest of our build and see what it all looks like when it's finished. We really appreciate y'all watching this video, and we'll see you on the next one. Well, I hope